Okay, so with example one, uh, we can, we're asked to find a whole bunch of stuff, which we will go through and do. We'll find the center, uh, values of A, B, and C, so we can find vertices, foci, et cetera. And then uh, we'll look at uh, what the asymptotes would equal. Well, so as we look at that, uh, with this particular equation, the first thing that I would notice is it's not in the structure that we have for a hyperbola, right? So what can we do to get it into that structure? Divide by 16, all right? So that division by 16 will get this equal to 1, all right? So this will become x squared over 4 minus y squared over 16 equal 1. And again, looking at your format, which you can look at the yellow page that you have, all that information about the hyperbola is there. Uh, since x squared comes first, that means that this will have a horizontal transverse axis. So uh, the hyperbola will, uh, the branches of it will open to the left and to the right. All right. Again, you don't have to look at a squared and b squared to determine that. All right. So the value of a squared is always here. In the hyperbola, right? So a squared is equal to 4, that means a will equal 2. And this will always be the value of b squared, so b squared is equal to 16, which means b equals 4. Okay? With the hyperbola, yes. Okay? So you don't have to look to see which one's bigger, uh, it'll always be oriented in that format. What are the values of h and k? Uh, zero and zero. So the center is at zero, zero. So we can plot that pretty easily. And then we can count to determine the value or uh, the vertices and then those uh, endpoints of that conjugate axis, which will help us form that box we were talking about before. So since this hyperbola is going to have a horizontal transverse axis, uh, because x comes first, that means that we are going to count two units to the left and right. So it would be here and here. Those will be the vertices. All right, so our vertices, in this case, two to the left, two to the right, we can just write as plus or minus two, zero. Okay. For the endpoints of the conjugate axis, we will utilize the value of b, and we will be counting in a vertical format there. So those points will be at we'll go four up and four down. So that'll be plus or minus four, or zero plus or minus four. So that's the endpoints of the conjugate axis. Cool. Uh, and this helps us form that box that I was talking about before. So you don't necessarily have to draw in this box. Basically, you just need to know where the corners of the box would be. So when I'm doing this, it's just going to create a rectangle. All right. Or it gets a little weird there. But the, the key points are the corners of that box. All right. So the dimensions will be of the box will be times whatever A is and two times whatever B is. So we just again need those corners. And what that will allow us to do is construct asymptotes. So since I can do this pretty well here. Okay, there are so these, those lines there that I'm drawing through the corners of the box, they are not part of the <coughs> hyperbola, but they help set up the uh, width of it, basically. Right? So there are our asymptotes. Okay. So after you construct those asymptotes, it's important for you to again know where your vertices are located. And again, those vertices were here and here. All right. So now you have the ability to draw in your 
hyperbola. So the hyperbola, just like before with asymptotes, it'll gradually approach the asymptotes, but it won't get there. All right, just like uh, with solid vertical asymptotes before. So it'll look something like this. Like that. You could if you want. You don't have to. I mean, I just really need to see the asymptotes for the most part. You're good. Okay, any questions there? What's up? Uh, the sensor will be found by H and K, which will be attached to X squared and Y squared, like within that. Since there's nothing there, it's just going to be 0, 0. Okay. So if you see something added or subtracted onto X or Y, that's when you know the center will move. Okay. And just the rule, remember, there is inside opposite. All right. I'm going to get to that. Okay. Uh, so we found the center. Uh, the equation of the asymptotes we can find. Uh, notice that they have this point in common, the center. Both asymptotes go through the center. Do we agree with that? Okay. So they both go through this point here, which is at 0, 0. All right. They are lines. All right. So every line has a slope and a y-intercept, right? Well, in this case, what's the y-intercept of both of those? Zero. So when we're talking about the equation of the asymptotes, we could say y equals... And if we're looking at the slope of these, if I start at the center and I count up, that would be up four, agree, for the rise. And then the run would be two. So the slope is four over two. Four over two reduces to two. So that would be for the asymptote with a positive slope. The asymptote with a negative slope, you could go up 4 into the left 2. So up 4 would be positive 4 to the left 2 would be negative 2. So the slope of the asymptote with a negative slope would be 4 over negative 2 or negative 2. So the equation of the asymptote, we can just write in this format. We can say y equals plus or minus 2. That's the slope of both of them, right? And then x. We can write that in uh, intercept form. That would be y equals plus or minus 2x. Technically, the y-intercept we said was plus 0. Do we have to include the plus 0? No. So a and b help us determine the slope of the asymptotes as well. Depending on how the hyperbola is oriented, we'll determine uh, whether the slope is a over b or b over a. In this case, it was b over a. Remember, slope, rise over run. All right? Uh, we found the vertices. We have not found the foci yet. All right. To find the foci, what do we utilize? C. Yeah. And how do we find C? There you go. Yes, we use the Pythagorean. So we know C squared equals A squared plus B squared in this case. So C squared would equal 4 plus 16 which will be 20. If we take the square roots, that will give us root 20, which we can simplify, right? That would be 2 root 5. Large square that goes into 20 is 4. Okay. So the foci will be at, or will be 2 root 5 units away from the center. So our center is here. We're going to go 2 root 5 to the right and 2 root 5 to the left. All right. So they will be located somewhere. Like we got the decimal approximation for 2 root 5. Can someone help me out? 4.4 something. Okay. So the full side would be somewhere here between 4 and 5 and somewhere here. So there's our full side. There's our vertices. Okay. Remember the full side will always be further away from the center. And the location of those for the foci uh, would be, since we're starting at 0 and we're just going 2 root 5 to the right and left, that would be plus or minus 2 root 5 times 0. Any questions with that? Say it again. 